the pastor of St. Elsewhere in Middle America had a very busy week. And as he was driving back and forth to many appointments and obligations, he realized he needed to stop and get gasoline. But every time he passed the gas station, it was like, oh, I just don't have enough time to do that, so I'll do it later, and later, and later. Finally, Friday rolled around, and it's like, okay, the light's on, and either I'm gonna get gasoline, or I'm gonna be stuck on the side of the road. So he pulled into a gas station. Of course, he realized that every gas pump was busy. And there was a line of three or four cars at each area. So he just decided to put it in park, turn the car off, get out and stretch his legs and wait. He noticed one of the attendants of the station just kind of looking around, making sure that the little water for the window washer thing was full and checking the trash, etc. And of course, he was kind of mumbling to himself. And the pastor thought he was talking to him as he passed by. He said, excuse me? And he said, oh, no, I'm sorry. I was just kind of observing. He said, observing what? He said, it's a holiday weekend, and every time it's a holiday weekend, it never fails. All these people line up at the very last minute. It never fails. It's always the last minute. The pastor said to him, it's the same way in my business. Joke grenade. Oh, you got it. Oh, good. It's a three-second delay fuse or something. But isn't that true for us as God's people? We don't expect the parousia, the second coming, to happen today or tomorrow. It's in the book of Revelations, it's at the end, and it'll come someday. I have plenty of time to get ready, plenty of time to prepare. But when we put that up against our day-to-day -day living, especially in the summer months, Many people have taken trips across the country or halfway around the world. And if you're like a friend of mine who I've known for many years, you packed your bags three months before you left. I said, how can you possibly do that? Don't you need to take things out of your suitcase and use them in that three-month period? Oh, yeah, but I put them back. <laughs> Good for you, not me. I'd be going like, oh, where was that? As I arrived looking for things I'd taken out of the suitcase. But you spend plenty of time preparing, making sure you don't forget anything, especially if you're going somewhere where you don't know if they have what you need. You make sure it's with you on your journey. Jesus points out very clearly in the life of faith, we should take as much care about our preparations for eternal life as we do for the normal day-to-day -day stuff. And yet, we don't because it's not a pleasant thing to think about, is it? This gospel is very much oriented toward the end of the liturgical year, when we hear week after week, be ready, be prepared. And yet it just pops up among us today as perhaps a good solid reminder of how we are to be as God's people. And so our preparation is not so much getting ready for a trip, that we know we're gonna come back from or have pretty good assurances we're gonna come back from eventually, even if the flight is canceled, we'll make it back home. But this is preparation for eternal life, a little bit different. And so the preparation is not so much for a trip, but if you have the image that we live in the middle of a national forest in a drought in fire season, that's the image. When you live there, you always have an essential box or bag packed. For when you're given that moment's notice, evacuate. You just pick it up and you go. And so we're not throwing things in a bag in preparation for eternal life, nor is it something that we dread who would not want his or her faith fulfilled at the end of this life when you take your very first step into all eternity. Even though it's a faith that we have struggled with, we have wrestled with, to try to understand throughout our whole entire life. And at different times, things become clear, as St. Paul reminds us. 
the veil is lifted and we see clearly, distinctly, where our faith calls us to be. For some of us, our family members, relatives and friends, our faith community, they have gone before us. Their moment of preparation has come and gone. And so they remind us, be prepared for a time when neither of us know the Lord will be there. Whether it is individually or communally at the parousia, the second coming, the Lord will be there. The question is, will we be ready? We don't want to be like the story at the gas station, last minute scrambling, trying to say, oh my gosh, can I squeeze in the gates of heaven? But yet, what do we pack? What essentials do we take? How should we prepare? Well, the other phrase of store up for yourselves treasures in heaven. In other words, the moments of grace that we encounter every single day Prompted by the Holy Spirit, there's a moment of grace. Enter into it. You know, it's a busy day. I'll get to it tomorrow. I'll leave it till the day after. I am too busy right now. Eventually, the tank's going to run dry. And you may not make it to the gas station. Do it now. Do it today. Do it every day that the Lord gives us. Because he only gives us the day when the alarm goes off, we wake up, wipe the sleep out of our eyes and see a new day. That is the only thing we are given. And it's what we do with that day in preparation, how we prepare ourselves for eternal life that ultimately will make the difference, ultimately will allow us to see the realization and the fullness of our faith. Even though we have wrestled with it, struggled with it, gone through doubts and moments of question and come out on the other side stronger in our belief and all because of our own preparedness, all because we are led by the grace of the Spirit. We listen, we follow the instruction, we see the moments the Spirit points out to us, and we enter into them willingly, not begrudgingly, but willingly. So perhaps the last few years have dulled our senses of how we are to be as God's people in the world each day. Granted, we have the live stream, and that is a blessing. But it's if and only if you cannot be here in person, receiving the Eucharist physically, consuming Christ himself, and that unique strength. So as my dad would say, get off your, well, he'd say it a little differently as a Marine, so I will paraphrase it. Get off your backside and get involved don't be the generation that just simply sits around and plays on their cell phone and plays games online. Become involved in life. This is the life God gave you. Don't waste it. Don't squander it, but live it. And those words are indeed words that stay with me. Not easy, but always worthwhile. And I realize Mm, grandmother's wisdom. You know, I hear you, I understand your intentions are really good, Michael. But you know what? Tomorrow never comes. You're only given today. So go ahead and take care of what you say you're going to take care of today. The Lord simply asks us to be prepared fully and completely in the life of faith. And preparation happens each and every day.